So here's the problem. Gloomhaven is a really great game designed to be played with physical components, but now we also have the option to play the digital port of the game. So which one is better? Today I'll take you through the relative strengths of each and I'll score them to help you figure out which one is better. This is Legendary Tactics. My goal is to give you a little sample of each version of this game and put them side by side using 10 different metrics. I'll tell you my opinion, but I also want to leave room for you to score this differently from me. Make sure to tell me if you scored this the same as me or differently in the comments below. Yell at me for my ignorance or praise me for my discerning taste if you think I deserve it. I'll put a poll in the community tab as well so we can quantify our scores. You can vote on that and we'll see what other people think. Let's get right into it. Number one, learning the game. First, we should look at which version will give players a better experience when they're learning it. This is a heavy game, so necessarily there are more complex rules and interactions to learn. And I confess that there is a barrier to entry with this game as a result. It's also a game that you need to get to the table frequently to remember the rules between plays. The mechanics are unique, or at least they were when it first came out. So the physical game is challenging to learn. The digital game, while it uses all of the same rules, offers tutorials to play through so that you can learn each character individually. It's a soft introduction to the game. There's also a Guildmaster mode to ease the learning curve. So I give the first point to the digital game that teaches the game on a need to know basis and lets you get right into the action. It's got lots of examples and it's really well illustrated. So start your own score sheet now and either disagree or agree with me. But for now, it's zero to one for the digital edition. Number two, this leads naturally to the question of rules enforcement. When I play complex games, such as Root, I struggle to remember all the rules and I'm fairly laissez-faire when it comes to pedantic rules. I play to have fun, not to ensure that I follow letter of the law. Once you get to know all the rules, they're fairly intuitive, but mistakes will happen if you don't pay attention. In the digital game, all the rules are enforced. There's no cheating or bending the rules, and that works really well for me. It may not for everybody, but I confess that I don't really know the rules as well as I should. And that's why we have NATO on our channel. There's another point for the digital game. It's 0 to 2 now. Number 3. Next on the list of important features for a game is what the experience is like. What kind of interaction is there between you and the game? In the tabletop game, you open the box, you discover a trove of smaller mini boxes, characters, maps, and surprises, and it's a very tactile experience. There's a joy in playing the game, and I really mean playing with it, because it's like being a kid again and getting a new toy, except for adults. I love that feeling, and I don't get it as much as I'd like to in my busy adult life. With the digital game, I'm reminded that I've got a mouse in my hand, not the deck of cards. I'm reminded that I'm at my computer, a place that I spend way too much time, and it's limited to the size of my monitor. The physical game spreads out over my whole table. The miniatures alone are a vital part of the experience, and a digital rendering is just, well, it's flat. So this point goes to the cardboard for me. It scores one to two. Number four, storage. If we're looking at the practicality of the game, there are other considerations too. Something that becomes more apparent to me as my collection grows is that the space is a limiting factor. I can't buy new games when my cupboard is full unless I A. Build a new cupboard B. Start a second secret cupboard that only I know about C. Dedicate a room to games or D. And I have sequenced these in the reasonable way that any gamer would get rid of another game. And in the case of Gloomhaven, I would actually have to get rid of two or three games to fit this massive box in my cupboard. During COVID, my game collection has actually begun shifting to digital platforms more because it's easy to store them on my computer. So this is one point for the digital game. That brings us to a score of one to three for the digital game. If you're finding this comparison helpful, if you could take a moment to like the video, it really helps our channel out. Let's go to number five, the mechanics. After all, this game is designed as a tabletop game, not as a video game. So how well does it port? What settled this point for me was the moment when I was playing the digital game and I found my crag hearts surrounded by skeletons and they were just standing there staring at each other while I was formulating my strategy. As a turn-based experience, that's just a little bit weird for me. My unconscious mind was just asking, why aren't they fighting? So seeing static miniatures on the board in real life doesn't feel weird. Working your way tile by tile across a digital screen feels a little bit clunky, but it feels natural when you play on a board game. So the mechanics point goes to the cardboard. That's two to three in favor of the digital game. Number six, a major challenge with any game is getting it to the table. What good is a game if you never pull it out, regardless of the reasons for that? 
This might be an unfair comparison during COVID, but extending beyond COVID, perhaps the biggest obstacle to working through the entire Gloomhaven campaign is gathering a core group of players regularly. Everyone's busy. It's really hard to meet in person enough to finish this entire game. This is not the case with the digital game. Once the kids or significant other are in bed, you can hide in your gaming room and play until the wee hours of the morning. If you're in the middle of a mission and you run out of time, the physical game is more difficult to hold over until the next session. Not so with the digital game. That's two to four for the digital game. Number seven, aesthetic and sound. As you know, different mediums bring different elements to the mix. To be fair, we also need to acknowledge these. The two categories I've paired up here are artwork or visual design and the sound. In the live game, sound is entirely generated by the players or in their imaginations. In the digital game, the ambient sound sets the tone and increases the presence of the game. But the board game's art is very flat once you compare it with the depth and the gorgeous renderings or the animations and the sound tapestry that's unleashed when you cast a spell, summon a rat, or wreak havoc on your unwitting opponents. Another element of the digital game that I absolutely have to mention are the cutscenes. The beautiful imagery comes up on the screen. You get a question, you have to choose one path or the other. There are consequences if you choose the wrong path, rewards if you choose the right one. I just really love this new addition to the digital game. So I have to give this one to the digital game, taking a commanding lead at two to five. Number eight, multiplayer. Like Family Feud, I'm going to offer double points for the category that's the most important to me. That's this category, the multiplayer experience. The reason I play games is to have fun. And the times I have the most fun are when I'm playing with friends. The human experience is really foundational for my enjoyment of a game. Who I play with actually matters more to me than what I play. It's about connection with people and creating shared experiences, like going to the movies. I don't go to see the movie. Instead, I go to see a movie with a friend or a family member. While there are always ways to connect with friends through voice chat, though not in-game, nothing compares to the live experience, seeing people's reactions, slamming down a card at a crucial moment, laughing together. This is an easy two-point win for the cardboard, and that brings our score to a very close four to five. The digital game is in the lead. Number nine, the solo experience and setup. With two metrics left, this one is going to come down to the wire for me. If you're not a solo player, you may not be concerned with this element, but Gloomhaven is a game that really plays well as a solo game. I'm what you might call a lazy gamer. I really love the game Axis and Allies, but I hate setting it up. The same is true here. For solo gaming, I don't enjoy the laborious part of building the maps, placing the characters, and controlling the AI. So for me, having all of that done for me in the digital game makes me enjoy the surprise of discovery when I open a room and suddenly a horde of baddies has me surrounded. The same can be said for the multiplayer experience in my case. I prefer having the game developers do the work for me when it comes to populating the missions. The digital game takes a strong lead for me. Four to six now. Number 10, replayability and the enduring quality of a game. My final consideration is how replayable or enduring the game is. A game is no good to me if I find myself not wanting to play it or feeling satisfied well before the full experience is over. I haven't played either of the physical or digital games all the way to the end, so I'd be really keen to hear from someone who has. This is the most difficult category for me to score because I can't look back on both experiences and make a fair comparison, but if I had to project forward, which of these two games will I give more of my time to? I think it's going to be the digital game. It just looks like the kind of game I want to play a lot of. So that's four to seven. The digital game wins it for me. If you like this kind of comparison, I did the same for my favorite board game, Kemet, and its successor, Kemet Blood and Sand. The link is on your screen. As ever, we appreciate you subscribing and coming back when you can stay a little longer.